Hallelujah. Well, as we celebrate Mother's Day today, I'm going to share to you about uh, we are going to learn from a mother. How many of you know that there are many mighty, mighty women of God in the Bible as well as mighty men of God? And uh, during this, this, this Mother's Day, we are going to look at one mother, one mother, a mother in the Bible who is so powerful that God used her so powerfully. And we're going to look at the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and on. Let's open to the book of Luke chapter 1. It's very easy to find. It's in New Testament, Luke chapter 1. If you have your Bible, I want you to open your Bible. Now, let me see how many of you bring your Bible. Okay, good. I'm proud of you. Okay, all right. Praise God. Praise God. Your smartphone, your iPad, whatever. Well, your printed Bible. Praise God. As long as you read it, okay? <laughs> all right. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. I'm reading from the uh, New King James translation. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, sometimes I read it fast, sometimes I read it slower because I want you to know what I emphasize in what I'm reading, angel Gabriel. That means the angel, this is one of the archangel, powerful, powerful. Can you say powerful? Powerful, Oof, powerful archangel. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed means engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, rejoice, highly favored one. Oh, this is a powerful word. Rejoice, highly favored one. Can you say highly favored one? How many of you like to hear an angel of the Lord speak that to you? Oh, I like that. Not only to women, but to men, to young, old, single, married, you know. Oh, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Wow, praise the Lord. Favor, and the word favor in the Bible is used interchangeably. It's the same word as grace. Favor and grace. Favor and grace is a powerful, powerful word. Favored. You are highly favored. In this context, in this translation, it's not only favored, but highly, highly favored. Woo! Woo! What does it mean? We'll look at the context later on and the story of Mary. All right. Verse 29. So when, he, when she saw him, she was troubled. Actually, not only troubled, she was afraid. How do I know that? We'll read on. She was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Oh, that means, you know, when she was troubled, that means she was actually afraid. That's why the angel of the Lord said, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have what? Come on now, you have what? Read your Bible, you have what? You have found, you have found favor with God. And behold, you will, continue, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name who? Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end wow powerful can you imagine if the angel of the lord speaks that to you even right now you are highly favored you are highly favored let's continue verse 34 then mary said to the angel how can this be since i do not know a man and the angel answered and said to her now read this this is so powerful. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Oh, this is so powerful. Should I move here? Maybe I can do, do this is the feedback. All right. And it says, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come.
come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. This is so powerful. So powerful if you read this word slowly and if you personalize this. When you read the Bible, why don't you personalize this word? This is not only talking to Mary. This is talking to Bethany, to John, to you also, John, to, to Bernard, yes, to Jerry. You, you, you personalize this word. Wow, this is also for you. You are highly favored. Woo, so many excitement in the house and you are so quiet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the six months for her who is called Baron. 37, verse 37. Let's read it together. 3, 2, 1, 4. Read God. Read it one more time. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. I pray that at the end of this message, the Lord will speak to you. And you will be able to respond, let it be to me according to your word, Lord. And the angel departed from her. What I'm going to share to you all today is uh, I want you to receive the impartation from the power of the Most High. And you, you need to know, you all need to know that you are highly favored. Every one of you. So that I want you to know that favor is powerful. Favor is not weak. And favor is not only for yourself. Favor is, some people have wrong understanding about favor, about grace. But I want you to know today from the other side of the, the favor, favor is not only for the good thing that you go through or you will go through or what you went through in your life, but also when you go through tough times, God wants you to endure. God wants you to be strong. God wants you to know that the power of the Most High is with you. But in reality, when God does something you don't understand, you have the tendency to back out. Oh yes, we want the supernatural things. We want to experience supernatural lifestyle. But when God allows you to go through things that you don't understand, we have the tendency to back out. Just think about Mary. If you are Mary, she made a plan. She's going to get married. She engaged already. She had a day. She, she looked forward for that day. She planned it. She planned it. She planned for the day. She planned for the special day to get married with the special man. And she is going to invite the special friends. Everything was laid out smoothly, organized, planned, well planned. And God interrupted. How many of you like to make plans? How many of you don't like to make plans? How many of you don't want to raise your hands? How many of you, when you already make plans, you don't do your plans? Well, let me suggest to all of you, I'm a person that likes to make plans. But when I make plans, I submit to God. Even before I make plans, I pray, God, I want your plan to be done in my life. It's not only my plan, because I know that God will interrupt. So I know when we are talking about building, when we are talking about building the multi-purpose building across this building, I know that the building shall be built. Yeah. Why? Because it's not my plan, it's God's plan. So what we are doing as a church, we are doing, we tap into the plan of God and it shall be done. Yeah. And you all, we all will see the glory of God because God will raise you up. 
So make plan, make plan, make plan. And when you make plan, make sure God is the initiator of, the, of, of your plan. If you don't know how to do it well, read the word and begin to pray. It's, it's in the word, it's in the word. And when we are talking, Glenn mentioned about making financial planning. Yeah, oh, there, 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 there are times that God interrupts. My financial planning, or also when, 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 when we got married, you know, God interrupted our financial planning. Even <laughs> well, when we did the capital campaign, we prayed, you know, uh, and we agreed to a certain number, yes. Uh, and then, <laughs> as the day is approaching, you know, both of us said, uh, well, I think God changed our plan. And the Lord said, I want you to double it. Whoa, double it, oh God, how could we do that? Well, we put our trust in God. So <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, when, when you allow God to interrupt your plan, you will be at peace. You, won't, you don't have to strive. How many of you still remember when Mike and Cindy Jacobs were here and we take a special offering for Generals International? I've known them for 20 uh, plus years, and we never, can you say never? never? We never, we never take special offering for Generous International. And uh, talking about God's interruption, can I be honest to you? Can I be open to you? I'm honest, but uh, not only that, I want to be honest, I want to be open to you. When we did special offering for Generous International, we raised $25,000 plus. That is after the tithing and offering that you have given. Come on. Amen. Some of you look at me like, I don't know what's in your mind, but I, I, I'm proud of you <laughs> because you are giving people. We are giving church. Amen? Amen. And uh, do we need the money? Of course. I, I shared it three weeks ago, but uh, we want to plant seed. And that's, 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 that's talking about God's interruption. Now, let, uh, let's move on. Think if you are Mary. Highly favored one. I think Mary would say, well, I've never wanted to be pregnant. I'm not even married yet. Angel, where are you? He left. <laughs> right? He didn't, he didn't stay, you know. <laughs> he left. The angel left. And Joseph Man, I'm talking to you, man. Young man, you are, you, you are engaged, you are about to get married. <laughs> I think if I were Joseph, I would say something like, hey, uh, she, she has to help me understand it. How come? Have you been unfaithful? What happened? You need to, under you, you need to help me to understand. This is talking about big time interruption from God. But... She was highly favored. God will interrupt your plans. God interrupted my plan when I went to school. Oh yeah, when I moved to America, I didn't speak English. And uh, not bad, the first two semesters, my, my GPA was above 3.8. And uh, not bad for uh, non-English speaking students. And um, by the way, that was before I received Jesus. And then I received Jesus. And after I received Jesus, my, my grace went down. Some of you, most of you know the story. And most of you laugh with me. Or some of you laugh at me. I don't care. And, uh, but God interrupted my life. And uh, until I was kicked out from college. You know the story. And uh, talking about interruption, that was big interruption. And then I did my business. We had businesses. And then when I was 30 years old, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to focus on the ministry right now and left your business. I want you to focus in the ministry. Yes, oh God, I, was, um, I have a big amount of checks and um, business was, was good. And the Lord interrupted my life. And then when I, the hard things was uh, when I talked to my parents and I said, Mom, Dad, um, I'm going to be a pastor. You're going to be a what? <laughs> pastor, you're going to eat stone. That was her literal word, stone. 
I, I don't need stone. Uh, I had steak. I, I had uh, good food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so my, my sibling, they, they questioned me, hey, because I, I'm the youngest. And they're talking about interruption, interruption. But I thank God. I thank God that He interrupted my life because His plan is better than my plan. I want you to know that His plan, God's plan is better than your plan. Sometimes we don't understand it. But my question to you is, can you stand when you don't understand? Some people, even if you understand, you cannot stand. But what I'm saying was, can you stand when you do not understand why things happen in your life? Well, that's, I think that's a good word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why when I share to you about the Word of God, this is not only information. I pray, even in my prayer, Lord, because sometimes, you know, after service, some people, can come, some people came to me and said, Pastor, that was a good word. Oh, I thank God for those comments, but uh, what, my, what I've been praying is not only preaching good word. I pray that you will be transformed because if you only receive information, you may be informed, but you are not formed in. You get the word, but the word is not formed in you. God will interrupt, and He doesn't care how much time you have spent. He doesn't care how much money you have spent. Oh, my parents to told me, you know, Paul, so what do you mean? You are not going to go back to Indonesia? You are not going to help us? You are not going to take care of us? Oh, you are not a good son. Oh, I said, oh, Lord, I, I, help me here. Help me here. But God doesn't care. You know, if when my parents said, oh, we, have, we have spent so much money for your tuition, for your uh, living expenses, but uh, God said, uh -uh, I'm going to use this, this man, this young man. And uh, that's what I mean when I said, God could care less about your time or about your money. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You've got everything set up. You, pa you make plans. I'm going to become this when I'm 23. I'm going to become this when I'm 28. Well, it's okay. And I encourage you to make plans. But make sure you, number one, you, you make your plan according to God's will. And allow God to interrupt your plan. Because honestly speaking, some people may not like it when God interrupts your plan. An angel came and said to Mary, you are highly favored. That's good news. Is that good news? That's good news. <laughs> and it's not going to happen when it's convenient. Well, I thought you said I'm highly favored, but I was on the run. They wanted to kill me. I have to run to Egypt. Well, I thought I was highly favored, but even when I was going to deliver the baby, it's the <laughs> deliver the baby that is uh, promised by you, God but I don't even have a place to stay. I, I, I thought I'm hi highly favored, God. I thought I'm highly favored, but I have to give birth uh, in a barn. I'm highly favored. Oh, God. I thought I'm highly favored, but I have to ride on a donkey and travel many, many miles. God. I thought I'm, I'm highly favored. I don't know what is in your mind right now. Maybe you're going through some challenges, some frustrations in your life. And you may think like, oh, okay, 
Lord, help me to understand because I don't understand wh what it means when I am highly favored. Luke chapter 2, verse 19, it says, But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. God will make stuff that makes you think. Or maybe you are thinking right now. Maybe you have been thinking. Maybe you have been pondering in your heart. And you ask this one simple question, why? Why I come up from this family? Why I grew up in a situation when there is some economic challenge? Why and uh, at my age right now, I'm going through transition? Why I have to move? Why I have to make tough decisions? Why? And, and you, ask, you ask so many questions. You ponder in your heart and the questions that you ask are the kind of questions that you don't talk it to anyone. But you ponder it in your heart. You think it, you think about it, and you're alone. You think. Sometimes God does something that is confusing to us. Say that again, Pastor, what? Sometimes God does something that is confusing to us. But God is not confused. We are. God is not the author of confusion. It's us because we don't understand. The Bible says that my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. That's why our little itty bitty brain is so limited. That's why we need to keep on connecting with the source, the highly uh, most powerful God. And you all can do that. And he allows something that is not explainable to happen in our lives. Some of you begin to get this. You expect explanation, but thank God we know this. Do you, have you ever asked God to explain what happened in your life and you didn't get any answer? I have a good news for you. You want to know? You are not the only one. <laughs> and God is not obligated to explain to us. No. No. Oh. Many times he interrupts your life in a crazy ways. I thought you said I'm highly favored. Several weeks ago, I attended this uh, leadership summit at Mott Auditorium. And um, the uh, summit was about, I think, about four hours, four and a half hours. And uh, because of our meeting with Mike and Cindy Jacobs, we came late. And we were, we were late for about uh, one and a half hours. And when, when I got there, it was, it was packed, about 1,800 people. And uh, so I didn't want to interrupt. You know, I, I just uh, found the, uh, uh, wherever seat that was available in the back somewhere. So uh, as I was, uh, as I seated at the back, <laughs> I was just seated and began to engage in what the speaker at that time was talking about. And uh, about, uh, about a minute, or maybe not more than a minute, uh, somebody was looking for me and that, can you please come? And they, the, this guy moved me to sit at the front seat, from the back to the very front. Wow. And somebody said, Pastor Paul, wow, you are a man with big favor. You have big favor. Before I continue, let me tell you, you also have big favor. It's not only for pastor. But let me adjust our understanding about highly favored to this verse. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she did not, she could not even enter the synagogue when Jesus was preaching. 
Jesus was preaching, and then Mary and the brothers of Jesus came, and then somebody whispered to Jesus, excuse me, uh, Master, uh, your mother and your brothers are here. And Jesus said, uh, who is my mother and my brothers? Those who do the will of my Father in heaven, they are my mother and my brothers. Mary didn't even get the back seat, let alone the front seat. But I'm highly favored. So I think you begin to have this adjustment now. So favor is not only talking about getting good deals when you buy cars. Favor is not only when everything is good. Favor is not only when you get front seat. And what I learned from this woman, she was not offended. And she didn't leave the church like some people do. I offended. But now... There are certain Christians that have this kind of attitude, easily being offended in whatever, whatever. It says, ah, I'm offended. I'm not going to come. I'm not going to come to carousel. I'm not going to come to church and get offended even not only about the church and the people, but to God. Why? Because they are not rooted in the Word. Mary was rooted in the Word. She was solid. She was solid. She was not offended at all. And I pray that all of you are rooted in the Word of God. Now go back to this context again. Can you just imagine, just think about this. How can you tell This girl, Mary, has favor, and when the angel leaves, she's going to get pregnant, and the people will be laughing at her. How can you tell? You have favor, and when you get a revelation of the promise of God, I'm talking about you, you, and then you get pregnant with God's vision. Are you still breathing? You got pregnant with God's vision and the people are laughing at you. Have you ever heard this word blessing in disguise? Blessing in disguise. Could it be possible that favor Wear the clothes of frustration? Could it be possible that you are going or you you have been going through several things? You are going through some discouragement, some challenges that makes you frustrated. But then, actually, God is showing you, I love you so much, you are highly favored. You are going through life and life is no longer smooth sailing. It's not only, it's no longer black and white. It's not, no, it's no longer right or wrong. It's, it's, it's no longer predictable. Life is com- complicated. Isn't that true? Life is complicated, but Mary has taught us how to be consistent when life is complicated. She was consistent. Men and women, be consistent. Even life is complicated. Stand firm. Even what you are going through, you do not understand. Stand. Mary has taught us to be steadfast and abounding in the purpose of God. When you are pondering in your life, when you are thinking in your life, what in the world is happening in my life right now? 
And let me tell you again, let me be open to you. You can have favor, but it doesn't mean you don't have frustration. You have the power of the Most High upon you. But still, you will have to ride on a donkey. I pray that you again allow the Holy Spirit to to speak to you. We learn, yes, this is Mother's Day, Mother's Day message. We learn from one of the women of powerful women of God in the Bible. But again, I want to speak to, to you. I want you to emphasize this again that this is not only for women. And as we announce the uh, seminar that we're going to have, the man seminar. Glenn mentioned it, he explained it very clear. And if I may add, growing old is automatic, but growing up is a choice. He mentioned it, being born as a male. It's not your choice, but but a man, to be a man, to be a man, man, man. We have so many, we we have so many, so many boys in the man's body. How long, how long, you men, I'm not talking about fathers. Fathers, I want your wife to buy a ticket for your husband's. This is a seminar, and you know what I'm talking about, the seminar. <laughs> uh, actually, we also announce it to this uh, uh, people in San Gabriel Valley. We, we, we talk, we call to pastors in the region, and if they have no plan that day, they will come. Many churches, they, are, they have already expressed their intention to send their people to come to our church. And when I met with the mayor of Walnut, I asked him, uh, well, is it possible if we one day if we have a seminar, we can have it in the they, they have a building? I forgot what, what, was that a city hall or the uh, citizen center? And uh, he said, "Yeah, you can, you can, you can use it." You know what? What I'm seeing there. What I'm seeing is he recognized that we teach what we teach here in the church is needed out there. While at the same time, what we teach here, some people in the church here don't get it. That's why we want to bring it out there. So next time when we have seminars like that, we may not do it here in this vicinity. Not in this building. Oh. So I want I want to emphasize again that the seminar is not only for fathers, this is for men, 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 men. We need a man. We need a man. Some people, they are they're just a male, but they are not a man. <laughs> I talk to high-ranking uh, government ministers, secretaries, and uh, they ask me about um, the leadership in America, the leadership in other nations, and uh, he said that, wow, we, are, we, have, we have crisis of leadership. I said, yes, sirs. Both of them, I, I, I told them, and it begins in the house. When I said that, you are so right, Pastor Paul. Have you noticed that this year we, have, we are doing things that we didn't do last year or the previous years? Have you ever wondered why? Because God says, I will grow my people with my word. And I do want to equip you. Can we move on? Only a few people say yes. Mm, 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 mm. Let me bring you to, the, to this perspective. Whatever is going on in your life right now, take a moment and think. 
whatever you are going through right now all the challenges the difficulties the the frustration everything that the the the, the tough times oh everything can you take a moment and think maybe god chose me for this assignment this woman mary who will not drop the assignment she she will not drop the assignment because the road has gotten rough she was consistent this woman who is consistent even when she is confused can god trust you with troubles can god trust you with disappointment can god trust you with discouragement Can God trust you with betrayals? Can God trust you with failures? I don't get it, Pastor. Usually the question would come up like, can God trust you with finances? Can God trust you with high position? Can God trust you with success? Favor is so powerful that god is not intimidated when you are being betrayed in fact can i say god trusted joseph with betrayal and you read over and over again in the book of genesis but god was with joseph and whatever he did was successful because he was favored but he was betrayed but he was sold he was betrayed by his own brothers he was slandered by the master's wife god trusted joseph would betray you can you see that when god says to you you are highly favored that means hey even when you're going through betrayal i trust that you can handle it because my favor is so powerful in you i think as a father myself i don't want to do it to my own children allow my children to go through those tough times but god why watch this when god give you promise when god give you the word of god when god give you favor god allows those promises to be tested so that you know the word that you receive is powerful and you can stand firm and you can fight against those betrayal those slander those troubles those problems those frustrations why because the favor of god is so powerful can god trust you with disappointments troubles frustrations or are you only here for the ride are you only here you like the blessings but you don't like the burden let me repeat one more time you like the blessing but you don't like the burden what did jesus say come to me all those who are weary and heavy laden come to me because my yoke is easy and my oh but uh, your burden is like i i don't like burden i like blessing so you are in it only for the blessing and not the burden of god some people they don't like to share the good news to others because they don't have the burden i don't have the burden to share the gospel to the people that don't know Jesus yet i don't have the burden you know let me share it say it bluntly they need jesus 
to go to heaven, they need Jesus. In short, if they don't know Jesus, they will go to hell. And you say, I don't have the burden. You join for the good time and the excitement, but you don't like the suffering. Can God trust you with good kids? How about can, you, can God trust you with bad kids? <laughs> Some people complain, oh, my kid is not like their kids. Well, God trusts you with bad kids. How about that? Because you are highly favored and you can handle your kid. You are the father, you are the mother. You are highly favored, you are powerful. And some people, they just like to critique. Oh, so and so, oh, the, their voice is so naughty and you critic, you critic, you until your own boy or your own girl. Get naughty. Oh, Jesus. I don't like restaurant critiques that cannot cook themselves. Oh, this is too salty. Oh, this is too sweet. Can you cook? No. You need a little bit spice. Uh, you know how to cook? No. I just know how to critic. I'm telling you today in closing, take a moment and think. Maybe God chose you for this assignment, whatever you are going through right now. Oh, by the way, when I say I'm, I'm closing, uh, I, I, I learned that I know some of you are in charge in the uh, food distribution, serving food. Uh, food can wait. So this food is very important. May Maybe God chose you for this assignment. Why did you say that, Pastor? Because God knows that a lesser man would have caved in. Because God knows that the weaker woman would have walked away. But not you. A childish individual would have thrown the towel. But not you. Not Mary. For sure. So I want to encourage you right now to make a declaration. Make a declaration. Yes, yes. I, with all the frustration, the challenges, the problems that I'm going through right now. Yes, I cried. Yes, I'm frustrated. Yes, I got crushed. But I'm committed to get this done. What this? This assignment. What I'm going through right now. I am committed. I am in it to win it. I'm going to do it when it's good. I'm going to do it when it's not good. I, uh, I'm going to do it when I feel like doing it or when I don't feel like doing it. Some of you say, I don't understand my own life. I don't understand myself. I don't understand my circumstance, my situation. But right now you make a declaration, but I am going to stand up to it. Stand up. I'm proud of Mary. <laughs> With all those challenges, all her life. I believe this is a tough one when she saw Jesus was crucified. And her son. The promised son was crucified. If you don't read the story too quickly, you could have thought, well, I'm done. Mary could have said that. She's done. She's done. It's too much, man. It's too much. Done. I will leave that. <laughs> you, call, you call this highly favored? I don't like this highly favored. But God, Showed in the life of Mary that she was consistent. 
She was, even though she did not understand, she stands. Even though she was in total confusion, she was consistent. She kept her faith. Don't abort your baby. God has spoken to all of you. God has given you plans, big plans, visions, dreams. Don't abort those babies. God is going to do it. And maybe you are crying right now, but, but pastor, I'm going through this pain right now. I'm going through this pain. It's like childbirth, childbearing pain. In fact, pain is an indication that birth is getting close. You might be going through a lot of opposition, a lot of challenges. Don't abort the baby. God instilled that power of the Most High. And he's, he's talking to all of you right now. You are highly favored. You are special. Believe that something inside of you, believe something inside of you is worth pushing for, is, is worth praying for, worth fighting for, worth delivering. Yes, it's in you. Let's all stand up. I want you to get this. I want you to own this. I want you to allow the Word of God to be formed in you. This is not only information. If you, if you only take it as information, there is no power. But I pray that you will say, God, I, 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 I say to you right now, Holy Spirit, I allow your Word to form in me, to be formed in me. Young and old, single and married, every one of you, be in prayer. It's a time to reflect. Could it be? Could it be that God chose you and God allow you? He allows you to go through this situation. God chose you for this assignment. And you, you can say, be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. I pray that today you're encouraged. You, you can understand from the other side what favor means. You'll be strong. And you will look back at your life and you can look at your present time and you will say, oh, oh yes, now I know. And I thank God for that. And I want to pray for you. It's time that you need to Make a decision right now. If you need prayer, I want to pray for you. If you listening to this word, you say, I, I, I need prayer. I, I want you to lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. Come on now. Anybody? Yes, yes. Anybody else? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Lord God. Lord God. Yes. Come, come forward. Come forward. Those of you that lift, lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Yes, and I want the altar ministry to be ready. Oh, God, I want to pray. And I want you to engage in prayer right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on now. God, Lord Jesus, I pray for each and every one of them right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, oh God. Every one of you engage in prayer. Every one of you. Yes, you, you say to God right now. You engage in prayer. Every one of you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Oh God, God, Lord, you have a purpose. And you said, oh God, I'm the God of all flesh. It's nothing too difficult. Is there anything too difficult for me? And the answer is no. Nothing is. You don't have to answer that. That's a rhetoric question. There's nothing too difficult for God. Yes, 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 Lord Jesus. Yes, receive this, this strength. You are highly favored that you can go through the tough times, the frustrations. You are not going to break down in the journey. You are going to grow up. Yes, yes. Lord God, you are not going to just critique or complain and uh, stop asking questions. Because God, 
God is here. God has planned for you. And His plan is great. He never give you a small plan. He's, he's a great God. Even the smallest thing that He gave is still big for us. It's big for you. Oh, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. It's not a coincidence, oh God. It's not a coincidence. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Every one of you pray. Every one of you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Right now, you make a declaration. I will stand up. I will rise up. Yes, because I know God's plan is so big. The favor of God is awesome. Lord, I thank you that oh, I don't know that I'm that powerful. You can say, every one of you, right now you can say in your heart, I don't know that I am that powerful. No, I know that you have trusted me with all these challenges because you are awesome. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord God, yes. Thank you, Lord, that today we can learn about courage. We learn about endurance. And Lord, we thank you that today we learn about, we learn from this man. We learn from this woman. We learn from Mary. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let your word sink and grow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Remember this. No matter what you're going through, He is good. God has trusted you to go through this situation because you are highly favored. God bless you all. Visit the book table and ask me is going to help you. Get the book. And Holly is going to autograph it for you. God bless you all. Give a high five to your neighbor. And you can continue sing, singing. You're good. Woo!